In this video, we're going to look at the Rn of a common collector, and we're going to use a shortcut. The actual small signal analysis of the Rn of a common collector is pretty complicated. So today I'll just show um, the shortcut, and it turns out that even if you do it through small signal analysis, you'll get the same equation. But first, let's look at where a, a common collector shows up in your amplifier. So we have our output stage, uh, sorry, have our input stage, it gives you your two inputs, and it also has a high Rn, because that's a requirement of an ideal op amp, and then it has the gain stage, and that's what we've been looking at and we'll look at this week uh, a little bit more. Uh, and that is often a common emitter, but not always. And then a uh, common emitter or common source if you're doing it with MOSFETs. And then you have an output stage. I shouldn't abbreviate. And its whole job is to show a low R out. Now, the reason why you put an output stage on uh, at the end of your amp, of, uh, at, the, at the last stage of your op amp, is that it turns out if you have a, a voltage amplifier, an amplifier that outputs voltage, it is going to have a giant R out. And what that means is that if this, if any current is pulled off of it, it's going to mess with this voltage right here. Your voltage won't be uh, your voltage will change. If you have this as an open circuit, like don't connect this wire to anything, you'll get one voltage, and as soon as you connect it up to another circuit, that voltage will change. So um, you need a circuit here that won't pull any current. Um, and it actually isn't that it won't pull any current, but it pulls a constant current, so your, your V is affected in the same way, um, no matter what it is. So... Um, if this is a giant R out, if we don't want to have loss on this wire, we need an exceedingly, exceedingly large R in um, at the input to the output stage. So if you have a giant R out of your gain stage, you need an exceedingly large R in of your output stage. And um, it's, it's in the reading, um, so I'll just note it up here. But whatever your gain is out of, your, out, of the, out of the gain stage here, it actually gets divided by the R in of whatever it's connected to over the R in plus R out. And if you, see, if you go and do the reading, you'll see where this comes from. But if R in is very large, then you get then your gain doesn't get attenuated. But if your R is kind of small, then uh, current flows and you in actually end up with uh, your gain being divided. So this R in being large is, is really important to keeping your gain um, from being attenuated. Um, and, and that's where we're going to look today because our output stage, uh, if I didn't say, um, is almost always a common collector. Or if you're doing MOSFETs, it's called a common drain. But in lab, we won't be doing MOSFETs. Okay, so let's look at the common collector. The common collector. Looks like this. And you have some resistance down here that's generally kind of large. Um, and um, again, this is it, this this R in the R in of your common collector is is tough to analyze using um, small circuit analysis. So let's use a shortcut here. We're going to do.
just rewriting the transistor in the small signal model. So there's my transistor. And then I need to connect this up. Uh, all I'm doing is replacing the transistor with a small signal model. So I see that at the base, I have V in. At the collector, I have supply. And um, at the emitter, I have V out. But I also have this resistor down to ground. Um, and this is this is the this is this circuit redrawn with the transistor replaced with the small sig signal model. Okay, um, just a, f a few things. To, doesn't really matter, but I always like to write VBE. Find VBE, and then you know that you zero DC sources because it's that one piece of a superposition problem. Okay, so now we've got this. Uh, let me draw in some more things. Since uh, this is the base right here, this current right here is going to be I, B. And this current coming in from this side, that's going to be I, C, since it's the... Uh, oops, sorry. Pause. Very sorry. <laughs> okay. So this is I, C um, coming in from the top over here. And what happens is I see pen stop working, pushing all the buttons. Ah, oh, there it goes again. Okay. I see splits between these two branches. This this current source right here doesn't generate new current. Um, it can only uh, the the current going through this branch. There's nothing generating current inside this branch. Um, I see splits up between this branch and this branch, and then recombines. So this is also I see. Is also I see. Oops. So this is also I see. So part of it goes this way, part of it goes this way, and then it combines again um, back to I see. There's no new current generated in either of these branches. It's just split between the two. Okay, and this I B coming down, it doesn't have any place to go. So this is I B. And then they combined to go through R. So the actual current going through R is the sum of the changes in IC and, and IB. Okay. Let's do all this um, VX. Um, off to the side here. And we know that VX equals IB plus IC times R. That's just Ohm's law. We've got um, VX here. We've got this current going through the R, which is IB plus IC times R. Okay. And I know that, um, I'll just move the, the R out front here. Um, I know that R equals... Uh, or, or IC equals beta IB, so it's IB plus beta IB. And then I can factor IB out, and I get um, R IB. Let's make that a little prettier. IB, 1 plus beta. So VX equals R IB times 1 plus beta. Okay, so now here's my claim that I can get Vx by putting a, a current of Ib plus Ic across a resistor of size R. That's what we did up here. So I can get I can get Vx from multiplying R by a current of Ib plus Ic or I can um, oh let me rewrite this one more time. So I can get Vx by multiplying R by Ib plus Ic, or I can get Vx by uh, multiplying Ib by a resistor of size R times 1 plus beta. Okay. 
So again, I know I'm repeating a, a few times here, but I can get Vx by multiplying R by this current IV plus IC, or I can get that same voltage by multiplying a resistor of size R times 1 plus beta times IB. They'll both give me Vx. So if I had a current of IB through a resistor of size R times 1 plus beta, I'd get Vx here. And um, notice that this top resistor, as long as the other side of it is it's at Vx, uh, this will give you um, the correct IB current. So as long as this size, side of R pi is at Vx, then you'll get the right current through here. And so if I do R pi, here's V in, here's I B. Notice if you have R B through R pi, you have R B time uh, through the, the, this bottom resistor. And we know that if the bottom resistor is R times 1 plus beta, we'll get V X at this node, which means you have the right voltage across R pi. Um, which uh, means that this basically shows um, the same resistance as V in as this circuit does. Because by adjusting the size of this R right here, um, uh, you are putting the voltage of Vx there, and therefore you have the same voltage across R pi as you do in this full circuit. So you get the same current through R pi, and this all... Uh, if you're at Vn, you can't tell the difference between this whole circuit and this simplified circuit. Okay, so now if you have this this circuit, and somebody asks you what Vn is, because this is just two resistors in series, you or, sorry. If somebody asks you what R in is, it's just two resistors in series, so you get R pi plus R one plus beta. And let me clean that up just a little bit here. You get R pi plus R times one plus beta. Uh, this video went long because I was repeating stuff a lot of times. But this is the shortcut way to find the equation uh, for R in of a common collector. It also works for a, uh, a common emitter with degeneration. But this is the equation of R in for um, a degenerated common emitter or a common collector amplifier.